Welcome to the first global virtual Autodesk University. I'm coming to you from the Autodesk Technology Center on Pier 9 in San Francisco. And wherever you are watching from, I know this year has been a challenging one for each and every one of you. Some of you are still working remotely. Some of you are back at the office. But what we all consider normal has changed. Wherever you are, each and every one of you has seen just how important resilience is. We've all seen just how fragile our economies are, how fragile our processes are, our supply chains, and our ecosystems. We've all been challenged to do things differently, to achieve a new possible. Because we've all seen customer demand shift towards new ways of living and working. Now, even if some of this shift is temporary, and though there's a lot of uncertainty still to come, I believe that our opportunity, our future, ours and yours is gonna be bigger on the other side of this crisis. Together, I know we can reimagine possible. Now, why is that? Because since the crisis started, I've seen how many of you have adapted. You're already thinking differently about how you unleash innovation in order to meet this shifting demand. You've already rethought your agility and productivity to reduce the time, cost, and risk involved in all your work. And you've reimagined how you harness technology, how you better use data, automation, and insights to transform the way you make things, turning the challenges you face today into tomorrow's opportunities. So whether your work involves skyscrapers or smart cars, bridges or blockbusters, to reimagine possible, technology is something we've all had to embrace this year. We've learned to collaborate remotely, to work digitally, to coordinate our teams, our workflows, and our projects. We've learned to customize the things we make to address shifting demands and shifting needs. And we've learned to create things virtually, collaborating digitally on information models that give us rich representations of reality. We've learned to make beyond the construction site, the factory floor, and the production studio. And today, there's a new landscape in all our ecosystems. In AEC, it used to be that when a building project moved to construction, the architect's model got flattened into drawings and all that rich information was lost just when it was most needed. But look at how much AEC has changed and how much it has changed in the last year. Retail development may have stalled, but healthcare and infrastructure projects have skyrocketed. There is no lack of demand. It's just shifted more than any of us could have imagined. Social distancing has accelerated investment in offsite construction methods, keeping people and projects in more controlled environments. So though job sites are safer, in some cases they're also slower. But one thing has accelerated, the digitization of construction. This was happening already, but not urgently enough. Today, it's a necessity. And soon, after we're on the other side of this crisis, construction will be permanently digitized. And once this happens, I believe you'll build with agility and productivity like never before. Early in the pandemic, especially with none of us going anywhere, demand was also hit equally hard in manufacturing, leading to a fall off in production for everything from phones to cars. At the same time, factory closures broke fragile supply chains, hitting manufacturing the hardest. But these shifts in demand were by and large transient. Supply chains got reconfigured, parts started to flow again, and production ramped up as demand slowly returned. And though that demand continues to grow, one thing we will soon see is that supply chains will be more distributed and forever more resilient, which is something that I believe will make your businesses more resilient too. And finally, with the crisis bringing film shoots to an abrupt halt, movies stalled, leaving studios scrambling. But the demand for entertainment didn't go away. Quite the opposite, it exploded. Streaming's a big part of this, but this boom goes way beyond just distribution. More people with more time on their hands means new stories and bigger worlds, made for new and even bigger audiences. 
It used to be that entertainment started life in the physical world with physical shoots, actors, and sets. But we're already seeing studios reimagining how they produce stunning experiences by blending the physical and the digital. And in the future, the line between physical and virtual production will be forever redrawn. These lines are being redrawn in all your ecosystems. And I believe that's what's leading us to a new possible. As entertainment moves from the physical to the digital, as supply chains become more resilient, and as every industry becomes increasingly digitized, there's even more need to coordinate how work flows between teams and disciplines. Today, all of you in the AEC industry, architects, engineers, contractors, you need to be able to coordinate your work from anywhere. But to meet tomorrow's demands, data will need to flow from design to construction and directly into a building's digital twin. This is where insights will cycle from operations back into the hands of architects and engineers, builders and owners, allowing all of these disciplines to make decisions based on data generated throughout the entire life cycle of an asset. So how do we get there? Last year at AU, we announced Autodesk Construction Cloud and promised greater depth, breadth, and connectivity across our construction solutions, not just a collection of disparate tools, but a truly connected construction experience where data can flow from design to planning building and operations. And I'm proud to announce today, Construction Cloud takes a big step forward with a new generation of construction solutions. Autodesk Build, a new project cost and field collaboration solution that leverages the best of BIM 360 and PlanGrid. Autodesk Quantify for integrated 2D and 3D quantification. And Autodesk Coordinate, model coordination and design collaboration brought together all built on Autodesk Docs, a shared data environment that enables powerful insights throughout the entire life cycle of a project. And speaking of data, we're committed to making your data more interoperable, accessible, and more open. We've partnered with the Open Design Alliance to make Revit IFC4 compliant. This will enable workflows with non-Autodesk tools. By January, BIM 360 Docs will support ISO 19650 compliant workflows, and Autodesk Docs will soon follow. And that's not all. Early next year, AEC Collection subscribers will have access to Autodesk Docs, allowing you to share data and collaborate in over 50 file formats. It's impossible to talk about construction data without talking about BIM. BIM is at the center of the digital transformation sweeping the industry. And BIM is more important today than ever. So we're building on the functionality in our design tools to make BIM creation more scalable and more automated, not just in building design, but in infrastructure design too. With our new grading optimization extension for Civil 3D, civil engineers can define key parameters and sit back as the system creates an optimized site plan that will literally lay the foundation for a project success. Automation like this can help you save time and it can help you generate better solutions. Now you've heard me talk about generative design before and we've been working hard to make this powerful technology more accessible. Revit 2021 includes tools that bring the power of generative design directly into Revit with no coding required. You can define key design requirements and instead of just documenting your decisions, Revit produces design optimizations customized to your criteria. So you can see that we're investing in solutions that improve your ability to customize designs on demand and make the rich BIM data you create more interoperable, accessible, and open. And that's important because when you bring BIM data into rich real-time environments, it fuels better discussions and better decisions. You know that and your customers know it too. Building owners have woken up to the value of BIM and they're asking for a digital handover where all of the data generated throughout design and construction comes together to form the basis of a digital twin. Today, we're taking the first step 
towards delivering a true digital twin for AEC with Autodesk Tandem. Tandem uses Forge to aggregate all types of project data from BIM through IoT and beyond. It empowers owners to take control of their assets and decisions, and designers and contractors to deliver more value to their clients. This is the foundational technology that will allow real-time collaboration between owners, architects, engineers, and contractors throughout the entire life cycle of a project. What you're seeing here is real software. It's not a mock-up. And I am excited to announce that the first public beta of Autodesk Tandem will be available soon. And for you architects, there's more. Here's Amy Bunzel, our Senior Vice President of AEC Design, to share some big news with you. Amy? Thank you, Andrew. Just this morning, we announced that Autodesk has an agreement to acquire SpaceMaker, which builds AI-powered design software for AEC. This is fantastic news for all of you in the industry. SpaceMaker's outcome-based design solution accelerates our vision for the future of design and will drive more automation and insights across the Autodesk portfolio. SpaceMaker is built for architects by architects, allowing you to quickly create and evaluate options for building and urban design. As many of you know, this is increasingly critical as the world moves to house our rapidly growing population and to better manage urban density. Put simply, SpaceMaker's technology is generative design for urban design. It lets you analyze dozens of criteria and how they might play out in your design, all in real time and all in the cloud. Its powerful AI technology will help you see what's possible in any design project. How many units could you build on the site? What kind of sight lines could you have? How does daylight, noise, or wind affect your design? You can then test the feasibility of various design ideas and pick the most optimal one. SpaceMaker helps you make data-driven design decisions to ensure the best outcomes for your projects. And this is what makes adding SpaceMaker to the Autodesk family so meaningful. I am energized about what this new addition means for you, our customers. You'll hear all about it in the AEC keynote. And to give you a preview of what we're showcasing in AEC here at AU, I'd like to introduce Leona Frank in our Boston Technology Center. The architecture, engineering, and construction keynote starts immediately after this session. In it, you'll see how we are connecting design and construction more closely than ever before. You'll learn a lot more about what we're doing to enhance the functionality in our design authoring tools. You see a demonstration of Autodesk Build. Get updates on exciting partnerships and investments we've made to bring you more value. Take a dive into the world of industrialized construction. Get a closer look at Autodesk Tandem. And most exciting of all, you'll see what Autodesk is doing to make your data more interoperable, accessible, and open. If you're an architect, an engineer, a contractor, or anyone whose work touches the AEC industry, you won't want to miss it. Thanks, Leona. The work we're doing to truly connect all parts of AEC is so exciting because I believe it'll enable this industry to collaborate in near real time with agility and productivity. So what might real-time collaboration look like? What possibilities could we reimagine when all the project stakeholders truly work together as one team. Here to tell you more about what connected design and construction can accomplish is James Hepburn, Engineering Principal at Building Design Partnership. Thank you, Andrew. One night in early March, I was with the Chief Executive of Great Ormond Street Hospital in London, brainstorming ways to meet the city's expected need for intensive care beds. COVID-19 cases were growing. There wasn't time to build something new, we needed to reshape and repurpose an existing space. So we asked ourselves, what about an exhibition center? What about London's Excel Center? Could a 45,000 square meter convention space become an emergency hospital? BDP explored the feasibility of the project and prepared a technical paper for the National Health Service, the NHS. The army supported the concept and the government greenlighted what would eventually become the first NHS Nightingale Hospital. We joined the team at the Excel Center with a brief to deliver 500 ICU beds within a week and 3,500 more 
in the weeks to follow. Nothing had been done on this scale before, but we knew we could do it if we focused on being as agile and productive as possible. We coordinated our workflows in Revit to design quick layouts, repurposing Revit families from previous healthcare projects to speed the design. A team of BDP architects and engineers collaborated with other fantastic consultants, designers, specialists, and contractors. We printed our initial designs, iterated rapidly, and got sign-off from the client. Within a day, we had a plan in place. There were huge numbers of people involved from dozens of organizations, including experts from the NHS, contractors from every conceivable field, and even the army. A leadership team guided by the military convened twice a day, once in the morning and once at night. And when the teams and work stream leads presented and worked through design and construction challenges in real time, it was clear from the outset that to hit the deadline, we would need to design and build in parallel. We needed a design that was modular, repeatable, and that could be customized and built on demand. Our design decisions were based primarily on the availability of materials. The team needed to procure 4,000 lights, 116,000 meters of cable, 8,000 oxygen terminals, and 20 kilometers of medical copper gas tube, as well as the hospital beds and ventilators. Everyone on site pushed hard, working 15, 16 hour days in a fast changing landscape. Revit's ability to change one design detail and have it propagate across all systems saved us a lot of time. And while the team were focused on fitting out the hospital quickly, we also had to keep in mind that with any luck, we would need to disassemble everything. Hopefully, one day soon, the Excel Center will return to its original state. But first, to understand the patient's flow through the Nightingale Hospital, the team relied on virtual creations of the space. We were designing a place where sick people would come to be cared for, so we needed to make sure every part of the patient treatment was accounted for. The team taped a to-scale plan of the center onto the floor and consulted doctors and nurses with every step of a patient's journey. This was a brilliant solution, but difficult to replicate nationally. Other teams from across the UK were hard at work on other hospital locations, and we wanted to pass on what we'd learned at the Excel Center to help our colleagues be even more agile and productive. So we created the Nightingale Manual, which digitized everything we'd learned. While we may have worked largely on paper, the Revit model was always our source of the truth at NHS Nightingale and the other hospitals as well. At other sites, project teams used BIM 360 and PlanGrid to track progress, share drawings and markups, work through installation problems and ensure quality. Ultimately, the NHS Nightingale team delivered the first 500 hospital beds in nine days and three and a half thousand more in the following weeks. We proved that when we work together, even in the face of extraordinary challenges, anything is possible. As builders and designers, we learned that sometimes the right solution is not to build something new. It's to refit and reshape what's already there to meet the needs of the moment. Thank you, James. While the circumstances around this project were tragic, the response was not only heroic, it was profound. We've seen that digitizing the design process, creating standards and templates, and facilitating near real-time collaboration throughout design, construction, and operations is important now. And I believe it's critical for the future. Which is why, as your technology partner, Autodesk is investing in design authoring, connecting construction with construction cloud, and empowering building owners and operators with Autodesk Tandem. So how might Autodesk take a similar approach to the teams who worked on Project Nightingale and help all disciplines make better decisions for product design and engineering in near real time together? Well, just as we're helping coordinate how data flows between different phases of building projects and coordinating all the different disciplines involved, we're doing the same in product design and manufacturing. We're using Forge to build a unified platform that brings disciplines closer together, allowing you to collaborate in Fusion simultaneously and concurrently as of today in Core Fusion. So no matter how distributed your teams are, you can all be exploring the same design. The Forge cloud data service means that your designers can be working on generating new ideas, and at the same time, your engineers can be validating each design's performance Tooling can be planned and prototype produced, all from the same model. Wherever your teams are located, this cloud data service means that all your disciplines can explore the same design challenge all at the same time. 
and we're expanding the range of design challenges that you can explore in Fusion. Until today, generative design was focused on the exploration of structural forces. But now your engineers can also explore fluid characteristics, like whether a valve will perform with a certain flow rate or certain pressure, helping you find optimal solutions for parts like these. And Fusion's manufacturing constraints can help you explore what ways these parts might be made, giving you insights into whether they are best cast, molded, or milled. And just as Fusion's data is stored in the cloud, these insights are computed in the cloud. But just how far can we take that data? Because the cloud data service that underlies Fusion is built fully on Forge, it's fully open. So not only does Forge enable concurrency, it fuels extensibility. Today, we're announcing Forge for Manufacturing, which can help streamline your design processes because it provides open access to not only Fusion's data, but data from other applications and processes as well, helping you connect to other parts of your ecosystem by opening the door for your partners to access your Fusion data more easily and to allow our partners, partners like ANSYS, to build on the value of Forge for Manufacturing by developing seamless workflows between our products and theirs. We announced our partnership with ANSYS at AU last year, and in January, you will be able to set up simulation studies in Fusion and seamlessly push them to ANSYS Mechanical and Discovery. And what's more, next year, the ANSYS simulation results will flow back via that same cloud data service into Fusion creating one single source of truth. And what about those of you who work across industries? Last year, we talked about seamless interoperability between Revit and Inventor. And one year on, we're leveraging that same data service and Forge for Manufacturing to build deeper integration between Inventor and Revit, enabling automated design workflows between architects and manufacturers of building products. These connections help those of you who are industrializing your workflows about DFMA, Design for Manufacturing and Assembly, to further optimize your timelines and your supply chains. So where else might Forge for Manufacturing bring you value? We've used it to automate the process of building online configurators, connecting your inventor data to the cloud, helping you build more intelligent models and more meaningful web-based design experience this allows your sales organization to respond faster to bids where quick configurations are needed, or even help your customers to configure their own designs to suit their specific needs. And finally, remember that digital twin you saw for AEC? We're moving one step closer to that in manufacturing. Today, we've also released machine simulation in Fusion, enabling you to run simulations of a digital representation of the physical machines on your shop floor. You can simulate your tool pass on the machine virtually to check that there are no collisions with the part or with any part of the machine. This improves process reliability and it reduces human error, removing the guesswork and the grunt work from migrating a digital process to a physical machine. Because taking control of physical assets and their operation isn't just something that should benefit building owners, it's something that should benefit owners of machines, production lines, and factories of all types. There's a lot going on in product design and manufacturing. And to talk a little bit more about what you'll see in the keynote later today, I'd like to introduce you to Srinath John Legato. Thanks a lot, Andrew. You're right. In the product design and manufacturing keynote later today, you'll hear a whole lot about what we're doing to bridge the gap between design and manufacturing. We'll talk about Forge for Manufacturing and show you how data is driving both collaboration and automation, bringing both teams and processes closer together. You'll see just what working concurrently in Fusion looks like. We'll show you how extensible and accessible our design and manufacturing solutions are. And we'll bring you exciting news on partnerships that help you extend the value you create. Those of you who work in product design and manufacturing won't want to miss this chance to learn how you can prepare for the opportunities of tomorrow. Thank you, Srinant. It's exciting to hear how data is driving both collaboration and automation. And I know this is going to fundamentally change the way you work. 
Now, one company preparing for the opportunities of tomorrow is Decathlon. It's the world's biggest sports retailer, and it's loved by its customers. Its prices are competitive, and its products are innovative. And it's the job of Charles Cambianica to reimagine what Decathlon's future products might look like. Thank you, Andrew. Like you said, Decathlon is big. We have over 1,600 stores. We employ over 100,000 people, and we bring over 3,000 new products on market each year. So my job as designer in the advanced design department is a big one. My team has to balance both innovation and mass production, which is challenging, as many of you know. But because we design, test, and manufacture almost every product we sell, we have close control of our supply chain, which means that together, Decathlon and our suppliers can work to ensure these products are both affordable and sustainable. A big part of what drives innovation in my team is Decathlon's commitment to reduce its environmental impact. And so my team are thinking about how we might manufacture things more locally. And we are also thinking about how this might enable us to more closely tailor our products to our customer wants and needs. For the last year, we have been collaborating with Decathlon's bike brand, Van Riesel. Van Riesel means from Lille, which is where all Decathlon's bikes are developed, and it's where my design team is too. Van Riesel makes road bikes that meet the requirements of the pros, but are priced to be accessible to Decathlon's customer. Last year, we set out to explore what the performance bike of the future looked like. But rather than start with the bike, we started with the whole customer experience, from how a customer might be fitted for the frame to how they might watch the factory printed, from how they might unbox the bike to how they might ride it. Now, most performance road bikes are made from carbon fiber, which is a material that is both high in strength and low in weight. But the dirty secret about carbon fiber is that it's wasteful to produce and it's difficult to recycle. We wanted to design a bike frame that's both sustainable and recyclable, as well as being light in weight. And we think we can slash the carbon footprint of the frame by printing it in metal. My team of designers and our engineers have been coordinating their work in Fusion. The designers are using generative design in Fusion to explore new ideas and new solutions. And the engineers are working concurrently to validate each solution performance. We have already 3D printed the bike fork and we are exploring how printing the whole bike on demand in aluminum could slash its weight and its carbon footprint. My team has been focused on function, but I've also been looking at form and how we can work to guide generative design to fit our brand aesthetic. And as a designer, I'm excited about how it might reshape our aesthetic and change the way we look at design process. While exploring what future road bikes might look like was one avenue my team was exploring, our exploration has opened up new avenues for innovation. Like this cycling shoe, which used generative design to transfer the rider's energy more directly to the bike while saving valuable weight, and this helmet, which can be customized to each rider and printed on demand to fit them perfectly. Because 3D printing doesn't care about complexity, we know we can improve both the helmet weights and its airflow. But we want to go even further. We want the customer journey to start in a virtual fitting room and end with a virtual racing experience. We want all customers to be able to feel like they're part of a team. We've designed this pod so that the bike you use to ride on the street could also be raced virtually at home. We are also thinking about how we might use RFID tags so each bike performance can be optimized digitally. It's this additional layer of digital experience that are key to how we are thinking about reshaping Decathlon's customer experience. Decathlon has always been good at evolving its brands, but by thinking about how we can blend the digital and the physical, we are also evolving the way it innovates. Charles, thanks for sharing your incredible work. There are a lot of people who would love to ride this bike one day, and what I love about your work is the new possible you're creating. By exploring how Decathlon's products might be more tailored to its customers, you're reimagining how your products might combine less environmental impact with more emotional impact. Even without the demand for immersive experiences like the one Decathlon envisions, no other industry has come under more pressure to meet ever-increasing demand than the entertainment industry. People all over the world want bigger stories, and more compelling experiences. Yet at the same time, no industry is more distributed than entertainment. 
each film, TV show, and game is put together by many different companies, with studios, artists, and visual effects houses all working together across the world to create a single product. That's why we're investing in moving production to the cloud, by building pipelines around open data standards that connect distributed teams. With Shotgun, our solution for creative project management, we are digitizing and connecting the entire production process. We're building streamlined cloud workflows that make sure each member of the team is working on the right thing and has the information they need to bring a creative vision to life throughout all stages of the production process. And just like in AEC and manufacturing, data is what links all phases of the project lifecycle. So we're enabling the integration of onset and editorial data. This brings the story into shotgun from the very first moment on set and will solve some of the most difficult challenges in production, keeping teams in sync on the most up-to-date data. But it's downstream where the majority of the data gets leveraged. And that's why we're also continuing to invest in post-production. This year, we started to build the infrastructure for full-featured asset management in the cloud. We want to enable studios to use Shotgun on our Forge platform to manage and share digital assets like characters, props, and environments. And the important thing underpinning these efforts are open standards. USD is an open scene description standard that originated with Pixar and has been embraced by technology companies like Apple and NVIDIA. Our new USD integration for Maya is the product of open source collaboration with the entertainment community. It's been production proven on films you've already enjoyed on the big screen, or more likely in these times in your living room. But open standards aren't just about film. They enable new workflows in other industries as well, which is why we're bringing them to 3ds Max too opening up their value to all of you who rely on detailed visualization to inform your decision making. And we're also working hard to connect processes in 3ds Max through Forge that until now have been mostly siloed. By automating and customizing processes like retopologizing geometry and converting photogrammetry data into assets with the right level of detail, we are enabling new ways of creating and aggregating 3D assets, allowing you to scale your production by processing thousands of models concurrently. And what you are seeing now shows how we're automating a highly complex process in Shotgun by bringing the concept of generative design to scheduling. You can now quickly generate and evaluate a range of scheduling scenarios optimized for your production needs. For producers and production management teams, this will make a largely manual and somewhat tedious process less reactive and more predictive, empowering them to make better, more timely decisions. And while we're connecting processes in 3ds Max and automating them in Shotgun, we're also giving you the ability to shape and customize processes in Maya. We're releasing the next iteration of Bifrost, a powerful tool that makes the customization of complex visual effects more accessible. From snowstorms and volumetric clouds to lightning and explosions, this visual programming environment is now even more deeply integrated with Maya and helps you build your own tools to use and share with other teams and other artists. Open standards are fundamental for all of this, for connecting and customizing processes within our products, but also connecting them with other solutions in your ecosystem. One example of this is our partnership with NVIDIA. NVIDIA Omniverse is built on USD and connects our solutions, including Maya, 3ds Max, and Revit, to third-party offerings you rely on, like Esri, Unreal, Unity, SketchUp, and Rhino. Omniverse enables synchronous collaboration, allowing professionals using different tools to contribute to a product, while observing their collective effort in a single view. With this, Individuals and teams across disciplines, even from different industries, can work together in a completely new way in one single environment. So by connecting the entire production process in the cloud, by automating and customizing entire processes, and by bringing entire ecosystems closer together, 
we are moving to a world where the lines between disciplines and industries start to blur. Before I share with you a customer that's working at the intersection of industries, let's switch over to Sarah Hodges in Boston. Sarah, can you tell us more about what the audience can expect to hear in the media and entertainment keynote? Yes, thank you, Andrew. We are very excited to share more news and announcements later today. Our teams have been working hard to improve and push the boundaries of our media and entertainment technology, from Maya to 3DS Max to Shotgun. This year has seen so much progress that we can't wait to share it with the audience, all following the North Star of production in the cloud. And I want to highlight one key idea that you spoke about, Andrew, connecting processes across products and disciplines. Because the media and entertainment industry has much to offer. We were the first ones to be digitized, and as you said, have coped with challenges like widely distributed teams that might be interesting to learn about for people in other industries as well. With that, I'll hand it back over to you, Andrew, and look forward to welcoming many of you back to our media and entertainment keynote. Thanks, Sarah. This is a great jumping off point to our next customer story about a company that is already leveraging the skill sets of more than one industry, Leica the stop motion animation studio in Portland. It has created films like Coraline, Paranorman, The Box Trolls, Kubo and the Two Strings, and Missing Link, all of them nominated for Academy Awards, Missing Link winning the Golden Globe Award and Kubo the BAFTA. They're works of art and labors of love for the Leica team. And stop motion is exactly that, a labor of love. But let's hear more about this from Steve Emerson, VFX supervisor at Leica. Thank you, Andrew. Stop motion is one of the earliest filmmaking techniques. It uses real physical sets and real puppets that are manipulated in very subtle ways across individual frames. And everything is shot in camera. When playing sequentially, these shots form incredible stories, stories with a uniquely warm, visceral quality that is hard to achieve digitally. That's why stop motion is such a magical art form. But it's not just magical, it's also very technical and incredibly time consuming. Every frame involves a lot of thought and a lot of effort. So we blend CGI into our productions because at the end of the day, we want to harness the best of both worlds. With CGI, we can go beyond what's possible in the real world and way beyond the laws of physics. And in combining it with stop motion, our movies don't lose their unique and artistic aesthetic. But this physical digital blend of filmmaking is a big and often arduous task. And to pull it off successfully requires a massive amount of coordination. For each movie, we have to carefully coordinate both the physical and digital workflows. And for that, we use Shotgun. Now Leica was one of the first Shotgun users, and we've built an efficient production pipeline with it. It tracks the digital as well as physical production of thousands of assets from those as small as tiny props to those as large as entire sets. And it coordinates the efforts of all the people involved all over the course of multiple years. We are also trying out the beta of generative scheduling in Shotgun. This helps us generate and test scheduling scenarios based on our needs during a production. It saves us massive amounts of time. And not just during planning, but also when we execute since the generated schedules are highly optimized, not wasting a second of anybody's time. And if customizing our schedules is a complex task, customizing our physical puppets might be as challenging. For each puppet, we use Maya to create thousands of facial expressions. And instead of hitting render at the end of creating an asset, our designers, they hit print. The faces are then additively manufactured and placed on the puppets, one after the other, bringing the characters to life. But beyond their faces, puppets also need to be able to move every other part of their bodies. Each of them has intricate internal mechanisms that are physically controlled by an animator. And these mechanisms are all designed in Inventor. So even though Leica is deeply rooted in the entertainment industry, we also try to push the boundaries of manufacturing and blend physical and virtual production as fluidly as we can. So for every single element of our films, we make a conscious decision whether it will be created digitally or by hand. And this is first and foremost an artistic choice. 
and it's driven by the needs of the story. So incredibly detailed puppets and sets are either built by hand, taking a team of artists weeks to build, or they are created virtually by the visual effects team. But with the same hands-on physical quality in mind, and certainly aided by the same people that make the physical assets. This hybrid approach is a truly collaborative effort, and it's a continuous one too. After drafting the script, we storyboard, create animatics, fabricate both digital and physical assets, and ultimately move to shooting a scene with physical assets on stage. Then we typically add digital elements and finally assemble the complete shot digitally. So whether elements are physical or digital, it really is a continuous loop. That in the end leads us to the stories that we love so much. And we hope audiences, that they love them too. Thank you, Steve. I for one love the finely crafted stories, characters and worlds that you are so famous for. And I know that they have excited audiences around the world with this unique quality that only comes from working at the intersection of the physical and the digital. And this line between physical to digital isn't just shifting in the entertainment industry. Those of you in other industries are seeing this exact same change. I said earlier that once we're on the other side of this pandemic, construction will be permanently digitized. It's the agility that comes with working digitally that makes building at scale and speed possible. This is what helped BDP respond to a fast changing landscape. And I believe that kind of agility is vital for all of you, whatever industry you work in, because all of your landscapes are changing fast. That's why we're investing in seamless data initiatives that connect your teams and your data. It was data that allowed the Nightingale teams to move from first layout to final fit out in just nine days. And the creation of a virtual model that embodied all they learned in this time enabled other field hospitals to be continuously reshaped as their needs evolved. When BIM data flows from architects to site workers, they're able to collaborate in near real time. And when that rich data is handed over along with the physical building, we'll see digital twins that empower owners to take control of their assets, their decisions, and their investments. We'll see an entirely new possible. That's why we're so excited to be a founding member of the Digital Twin Consortium. For this technology to really take off and benefit both AEC and manufacturing, I truly believe it's got to be open, which is why we want to help steer this important technology towards the open standards that will lead to consistency, security, and interoperability across all industries and all platforms. I also said earlier that when we're through today's challenges, supply chains will be forever more resilient. I said this about manufacturing, but it applies to all your industries. I believe one of the most important things you should all be striving for is resilience. Decathlon is, that's why it innovates alongside its suppliers. It works with its supply chain, reimagining how they might make products that more closely fit the needs of Decathlon's customers. In doing this, it's also reimagining how its products might be made more locally, more sustainably, and with more of a focus on circularity. On-demand customization is opening up an entirely new possible, and Decathlon is embracing how this could make its supply chains more resilient and its business more resilient too. Resilience is something that we're investing in too with Forge. Forge offers you all the opportunity to customize your workflows on demand, allowing you to connect your data, your customers' needs, and your supply chains. It makes this possible by helping you access and use your design and engineering data in the cloud. You've seen with our announcement of Forge for Manufacturing today, that we're investing in helping you open up the data currently tied up in your models. And because we're connecting that data all the way from design to manufacturing, I know this will open up entirely new possibilities. There are more than 645,000 people using Fusion every month. 
and more than 100,000 commercial subscribers to Fusion. For all of you, Forge for Manufacturing opens up an incredible level of new value. And we'll continue to build on Forge to help you connect to your processes, automate your workflows, and get insights from your data, not just in manufacturing, but in all of your industries. Finally, I also said earlier that in the next few years, the line between physical and virtual production will be forever redrawn. The lines are already shifting in entertainment because of innovators like Leica, but these lines are being redrawn in all of your ecosystems, from construction site to production studios. Leica is also no stranger to working at speed or at scale. In fact, scale is something that Leica increases with each new film. For Missing Link, it 3D printed more than 100,000 unique facial expressions. And though it makes a lot of physical things, its investment in workflow coordination means that its entire process is already digitized. At Autodesk, we know this is important to all of you. And that's why we're committed to making your data more interoperable, accessible, and more open. We're building a connected construction experience, using data to fuel collaboration across all phases of a building's life cycle, from design to operations. We're building a unified platform, allowing you to collaborate in Fusion simultaneously and concurrently. And we are moving production to the cloud, building pipelines around open standards to connect distributed teams. Open data standards are what's going to help us connect your processes, automate your workflows, and give you valuable insights. Insights that can help you reimagine possible, turning the challenges you face today into tomorrow's opportunities. What Nightingale, Decathlon, and Leica show is what we're all making is being reshaped by data. And so too are the ecosystems we all work in, the opportunities and risks we all face, the expectations our customers have of us, and the outcomes they desire. So during this virtual AU, think about how data can help you connect the disciplines you work with. And when you're in classes, look for opportunities to automate your workflows. Think about what insights you can share with your peers and focus on what adds value, value to you and to your business. At Autodesk, our mission is to empower innovators everywhere, innovators like you with design and make technology so you can achieve the new possible. That's why we're focused on creating automation and insights that will help you unlock new ideas and make them real ideas that will create better outcomes for your products, your businesses, and for the world. I believe that our opportunity is gonna be bigger on the other side of this crisis, ours and yours. I believe that together, we can reimagine possible. Thank you. <laughs>